Well, good morning. Happy Tuesday morning to you, and welcome back to Morning Musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I'm the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. Okay, uh, here again, using my laptop, I I have been unplugging, replugging, uh, turning on, turning off, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm, I'm just convinced at this point that my firewire has given out on me. Uh, I sure hope that's what it was. When I turned the camera on yesterday morning, uh, it came right up and then it stopped. And I unplugged the cable, plugged it back in, came back on. I started filming and it stopped. So again, I'm really, really pretty sure that I've got some cable issues going on here. Um, I don't know if I've got it under the firewire. I'll, I'll just have to get one. Okay, yesterday we continued our study of connecting the dots. Uh, as I've shared with you before, I absolutely love making the connections between key eschatological passages. You know, this passage will give you um, insight that another passage does not give. It will give information that this one doesn't give, and vice versa. So we simply cannot, folks, we cannot incorporate uh, or, or use this missing word, different word hermeneutic that I've discussed so many different times. Just because text A does not give the constituent elements of text B doesn't mean that text A and text B are speaking are not speaking of the same thing. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. It's like saying, as the old analogy goes, okay, you had three people who witnessed a car wreck. Person number one described it with four facts. Person number two gave six facts. Person number three gave two facts. Oh, wait a minute. Does that mean they all saw a different wreck? No. It doesn't mean that at all. And, and I think we understand that, at least on one level. But all of a sudden, when it comes to the Bible, people impose their preconceived ideas onto text, and they tell us, well, you know, uh, Matthew chapter 25 doesn't mention the dead, doesn't mention the resurrection, uh, doesn't mention the devil and his angels being thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone. Oh, that must mean that Matthew 25 is different from Revelation chapter 20, 10 and following. Well, it means no such thing. So I'm sharing with you some key eschatological texts, dots that we can connect together, okay? Just like yesterday, Daniel chapter 12 predicted the resurrection the time of the end, using several key distinctive words and terms, the resurrection of the just and the unjust at the time of the end, the suntulia eschaton, or suntulia Cairo, excuse me, <laughs> still doing that. Jesus in Matthew chapter 13 talked about the suntulia to aeonion, the end of the age. Both passages speak of the resurrection of the just and the unjust, the time of the rewarding, the time of everlasting life, the time of everlasting condemnation. Now, next dot, <clears throat> okay? Matthew chapter 25, 31 and following. What do we have? Well, I'm unaware of anyone that denies that Matthew chapter 25, 31 and following is about the end of the age. 99.9% .9 of all commentators tell us this is the end of the age. Most of them say it's the end of the Christian age. It's the end of the new covenant age of Jesus Christ. Premillennialists tell us this is the beginning of the millennium. Others tell us, no, 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 this is a millennialist and post-millennialist, tell us this is the second coming of Christ at the end of the millennium. 
So this is how the futurists break down their, their view of Matthew, Ma <coughs> Matthew 25, 31 and following. Again, premillennialist, it's the beginning of the millennium. And that's why it's different from Matthew, uh, Revelation chapter 20, 10 and following, the great white throne judgment, which is the end of the millennium. Well, let's use that argumentation. Let, let's use the missing word, hermeneutic, just for illustration's sake, okay? Um, Matthew chapter 25 doesn't mention the beginning of the millennium. So if you're going to argue, well, look, see, this passage over here doesn't mention certain things. Uh, Matthew chapter 25 doesn't mention the martyrs seated on thrones ruling with Christ for a thousand years. Do you see where that missing word hermeneutic, different word hermeneutic, gets, gets you involved in all sorts of self-contradictions or biblical contradictions? These are not different texts, but to continue. So we have a broad cons consensus that Matthew chapter 25, 31 and following, is the end of the age. All right? Now, even the dispensationalist will admit that it's the beginning of the millennium, and it's the end of the Christian age. So, you know, here, here are the dispensationalists saying what the amillennialists and postmillennialists are saying, and that is Matthew chapter 25, 31 and following is the end of the age. Okay, thank you. With that in mind, what do we have in Matthew chapter 25? Well, <clears throat> let's see. Matthew chapter 25, 31 and following doesn't mention the end of the age, does it? It doesn't mention the time of the end, does it? It doesn't mention resurrection, does it? It doesn't mention the harvest, does it? And yet, and yet, the great majority of commentators agree and admit Matthew 13 and Matthew 25 are the same time, the same event, meaning that since Matthew chapter 13 is the time of the harvest, the resurrection, and the end of the age, that Matthew 13 and Matthew chapter 25, 31 and following are the same. But we've already shown that Matthew 13 would be at the end of the age foretold by Daniel chapter 12. So let's, let's look at Matthew chapter 25. <clears throat> when the Son of Man comes with his angels, then shall, then shall he sit on the throne of his glory. Oh, by the way, Matthew 13 doesn't say a word about Jesus sitting on the throne of his glory, does it? <laughs> you know, one of these days, I, I think I'm going to produce a chart, be massive, illustrating how all of these major, major eschatological passages, the great majority of which are viewed as the same time, same event, omit elements, constituent elements, that other passages which the same commentators apply to the same event, and yet the two passages contain such different elements. Not contrastive elements, not contradictory elements, but different elements. It, it, it really does become humorous in a sad sort of way. When you see people trying to delineate between passages because this one doesn't mention this, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. But we have Matthew chapter 25, 31, the coming of the Son of Man. That's Matthew 13. It is the time of the gathering of the nations. Matthew th chapter 13 is the time of the end gathering. Well, is that the ingathering of the nations or not? Matthew chapter 25 is the time of the gathering, the 
gathering of all nations for the judgment. Well, uh, Matthew chapter 13 is the coming of the Son of Man at the end of the age for the judgment. You know, the delineation between the just and the unjust, just as Daniel chapter 12 is the time of the end and the time of the resurrection, the time of the judgment, you know, the delineation between the just and the unjust. Daniel chapter 12 is the judgment of the just and the unjust into everlasting life or everlasting condemnation. Matthew chapter 13 is the time of the harvest, i.e. the time of the judgment and the delineation between the just and the unjust. The righteous shall be gathered into the barn, into the kingdom, and the unjust sent away into everlasting condemnation. Matthew chapter 25 is the gathering of the nations at the coming of the Lord, just like Matthew chapter 13, for the time of the judgment and the delineation between the righteous and the unrighteous, the righteous receiving everlasting life, that's Daniel chapter 12, verse 2, and the wicked receiving everlasting condemnation. That's Daniel chapter 12, verse 2, and Matthew chapter 13 as well. So instead of, as I have suggested, instead of focusing on negatives, in other words, instead of focusing on saying, oh, look, Matthew chapter 25 doesn't mention res resurrection. That's a negative. Uh, Matthew chapter 25 doesn't mention the end of the age. That's a negative. See, it's, it's an omission. But because it's an omission, doesn't mean it's different from passages that mention all those things. We have three three constituent three. Excuse me. We have three key passages, ladies and gentlemen. Daniel chapter twelve, direct connection to dot Matthew chapter thirteen. Matthew chapter 25, 31 and following, dot, dot, and all three passages contain positive parallels, not negative omissions, but positive parallels. Time of the end, time of the end, Matthew 13. Time of the resurrection, Matthew 13, Daniel chapter 12. The time of the judgment of the just and the unjust, Daniel 12, Matthew 13, Matthew 25. Reception of everlasting life or everlasting condemnation, Daniel 12, Matthew 13, Matthew 25. And oh, by the way, Daniel chapter 12 is the time of the kingdom. Because remember, Jesus applied Daniel chapter 12, verse 3, then shall the righteous shine forth uh, as the stars in the kingdom. So Jesus applied Daniel chapter 12, verse 3, to the time of the kingdom. So Daniel chapter 12, 3 and 4, gathering into the kingdom. Matthew 13, time of the kingdom, gathering into the kingdom. Matthew chapter 25, the gathering into the kingdom. Now, tell me just exactly how we would delineate between these three texts. How many different resurrection gatherings into the kingdom for everlasting, for everlasting life are there in the Bible? I, look, I'm very familiar with the fact that dispensationalists have as many as five resurrections. That's unbiblical. It's absolutely false. There is no justification for it. There's one resurrection of the just and the unjust, Daniel chapter 12, verse 2, Matthew 13, 39 and 40. 
Matthew 25, 31 and following. One gathering, one resurrection, one judgment. When did Daniel say it would take place? When the power of the holy people has been completely shattered, all of these things shall be fulfilled. Dot, Daniel 12. Dot, Matthew 13. Dot, Matthew 25. All to be fulfilled and were. When the power of the holy people is completely shattered in AD 70. And we've got more. Oh, hey, look, don't forget. Get my brand new book, All Things, These Are the Days When All Things Must Be Fulfilled, regularly $18.95 plus $4.95 shipping for the rest of this month. Boy, here we are, you know, mid month already. But the rest of the month of July 2023, U.S. orders only. Total delivered price, $16.95. Go to my website, donkpreston.com, bibleprophecy.com, wonderful banner right up, right up at the very top. Just click the banner, order the book, and as I've said already, and listen, more and more people are contacting me privately. I've had several people say, you know, Don, this may be the best book you've ever written. Well, I've written about 34 or 35 books now, so that's saying something. You may well concur may rattle your cage, but I think you'll find it worthwhile. Order the book. I'd appreciate it very much. See you on the flip side.